There are nine Mr. Beast crew members who have either been publicly fired or have disappeared without explanation. And we're going to talk about all of them beginning with Matt Turner, who had one of the more controversial endings to his time working with Mr. Beast. Matt Turner was initially hired as an editor for Mr. Beast back in 2018, yet only five months after getting hired, Matt would upload a video to his personal channel titled Why I Quit Working for Mr. Beast, in which he'd explain that he was no longer on the team. Matt would then go on to praise Mr. Beast, talking about how much he enjoyed the job. This was a dream job for so long. Going to work was a blast each and every day. Mr. Beast paid for my rent every month when I lived in North Carolina. Me and Mr. Beast, I still consider friends. Never got in any fights. No one did anything wrong in this situation. If you're watching this, Mr. Beast, I love you, bro. However, despite ending his message by stating that he loved Mr. Beast, approximately one year and two months later, Matt Turner would take to Twitter stating the following. I'm not going to make a video about my time editing for Mr. Beast, but I will say that it was the most mentally draining time of my life. I was yelled at, bullied, and called replaceable by Mr. Beast every day. Being in tears and having mental breakdowns day after day is difficult, and after a while it became too much. After every editing mistake I made, I was made to feel like an absolute idiot. So that's a summary of almost every day on the team. That's what it was like to work for Mr. Beast, and that is why I don't work there now. While Matt might have thought that his Mr. Beast callout would command a bunch of respect and sympathy, the opposite of this happened, and everyone instead began to stick up for Mr. Beast. I think people are jumping to conclusions with this Mr. Beast stuff. If this editor really was harassed like that, wouldn't he have spoken up sooner? He's one of the most famous YouTubers, so it would have been easy to start accusing him. I think the bullying is just over-exaggerated. So basically, Mr. Beast's editor is a kid who hasn't experienced the real working world, so he throws a tantrum and starts slamming Mr. Beast with unsupported allegations the moment it gets tough. Kids these days. Bruh, this was one year ago. Why are you coming at him now. Keemstar would point out the most obvious flaw with Matt's Twitter thread. I just find it very strange that he's coming out saying all this negative stuff about Mr. Beast when a year ago, when he actually left, he uploaded a video saying it was the greatest time of his life. Whilst others came forward stating that they had a great time working with Mr. Beast. I've known Mr. Beast for over three years now and I was helping him with graphics for his channel. I don't even have one experience of him being mean or disgruntled to me in any way. He was always very kind and very nice. Which was once again echoed by Keemstar. I talked to one of his employees and he seemed like he loved working for him and Mr. Beast seemed like a really cool, genuine guy. Things became even worse for Matt after Mr. Beast had a phone call with Keemstar. And what Mr. Beast told me is basically like when they fired him or whatever, they gave him $10,000 and they got him a job at SOAR! And shortly thereafter, Matt deleted the tweets and was even brave enough to claim that his Twitter had been hacked. Despite basically being laughed off the internet, Matt Turner continues to upload van life videos, one of which including a pretty weak apology to Mr. Beast. If anyone was offended by me saying that that wasn't the best experience, well then I do apologize. With a whole ordeal being summarized by YouTuber prison mate Luke. What did you gain from it, really? A little bit of clout from the beginning. You destroyed any chance of you having having an actual YouTube career and all of those views went away immediately. And now you're just forever tainted with the fact that you're just the guy that lied about Mr. Beast. However, Matt Turner wasn't the only person to try and expose Mr. Beast before having it backfire terribly. Back in 2018, Fly Does YT uploaded a video titled My Experience Editing for Mr. Beast, Worst Week of My Life, in which he'd foolishly accused Mr. Beast of faking the content before going on to make the bizarre point that Mr. Beast didn't even appear in the videos. When you make a YouTube video, for your channel, you should, you know, you, you, we'll, we'll go film your video without you. That, no, that's cool, yeah. The claims were so outrageous that Mr. Beast himself took to Twitter before stating, if you think I'm faking my videos, then ask the streamer to whom I gave hundreds of thousands of dollars when they get them. Go and ask somebody who got part of the $500,000 that I gave away this year when they got it. You will not find a person who said I did not give them any money. These tweets were followed by Mr. Beast appearing on Drama Alert, where he'd explain the situation from his perspective I pay for his plane ticket, his Uber, his hotel for a week, his Uber, and his plane ticket, which he made a 25 minute quote unquote exposing video on me, but doesn't mention that I spent thousands of dollars getting him here, paid him $750 for like five days worth of work, which is really good pay. He has all these issues, quote unquote, but he doesn't say any of them to me while he's here. He doesn't talk to me while he's here. He just bundles it all up so he can make this 25 minute video and blow everything out of proportion when he gets home. Before going on to absolutely destroy the claims that his videos were fake. My videos aren't fake. Like I counted to 100,000. I watched 
dance to your dead for you know whatever i give streamers thirty thousand dollars it's just slander from his well, part whilst providing an explanation for why he wasn't able to fully appear in one of the videos i have crohn's disease most of you don't know what it is it was really acting up so i said hey you guys go film the rest of the video i want to go nap i gotta take it easy now he's making an exposed video like oh mr beast doesn't film his own videos like what are you going on about man you're trying to pin the fact that I have an illness on me and like I'm not public about this type of stuff. Which once again prompted a former employee to come out stating, as someone who is friends with both Mr. Beast and Fly, it is my unbiased opinion that Fly is in the wrong. Unlike Matt Turner, Fly has since had a relatively successful career, having built a channel with over 300,000 subscribers, yet he hasn't been nearly as successful as Jake the Viking, who's been able to show that a peaceful ending with Mr. Beast is always the most beneficial path. Jake appeared on the Mr. Beast channel for the first time back in June 2018, as Jimmy required a strong character to include within the videos. Can you dip this in the water tank for me? It's like, it's really heavy, but you're like a big boy. At this point in time, the content was often quite physical, and therefore having Jake as a member of the team worked out perfectly. However, by early 2020, the content became less focused on physical challenges, and as a result, Jake began to appear in fewer and fewer videos. He'd be seen one last time in $60,000 Extreme Hide and Seek Challenge, which was followed by a comment to Jake's TikTok two months later asking, are you still working with Mr. Beast? To which he'd respond, lol lol nah, they fired me. Nine days later, Jake will clarify this comment by uploading a now incredibly viral video titled Why I Left Mr. Beast, in which he'd explain why he'd been let go. And it came down to, my piece no longer fit the puzzle. If that if that's that's the best way to put it. Before discussing how he wanted to leave anyway, so he could pursue content creation under his own name. It was a mutual leaving. I'd already told him multiple times, you know, what I wanted to do was kind of be my own boss, do my own thing. Me and Jimmy did not have any type of falling out, you know, so everything's cool. Mr. B still love you, bro. Basically, he got tired of being an employee. He wanted to start his own brand, be his own boss, do his own thing, which is respectable. He didn't want to be just that guy on every Mr. Beast video. Good luck to you, Viking. Jake's peaceful ending in combination with his unique recognizable image has helped him to maintain success even after leaving the team, having gained over a million subscribers on YouTube and over two and a half million followers on TikTok. However, Jake the Viking wasn't the only person who eventually ran out of utility on the Mr. Beast team. For example, whatever happened to Ty? He was picked up on the side of the road for his first appearance in the world's largest bowl of cereal video. You want to come sit in a pool of cereal for 10k? And with comments such as, Ty is such a cool guy, he needs to be in more challenges, he was able to return to the channel. And then this is Ty Hello. from the serial videos. You guys really liked him, so yeah. we brought him back. Appearing in a total of seven different videos before he'd also disappear. Considering Ty was picked up at random on the side of the street, he was never an official member of the Mr. Beast crew, yet according to the wiki, Ty still works for Mr. Beast, but works mostly behind the scenes. Ty has since become a father and still maintains an Instagram following of over 28,000 and a TikTok following of over 80,000, on which he uploads music, comedy, and dancing videos. Tyler Conklin was another Mr. Beast member who disappeared from the videos without any explanation, and his disappearance is probably the most mysterious of them all. Tyler became the second Mr. Beast crew member after featuring on the channel for the first time in February 2016, when Mr. Beast had only 18,000 subscribers. From here, Tyler was featured in videos such as We Are Better Than Dude Perfect, which was followed by Tyler helping out Jimmy's brother, yet Tyler's final obvious appearance on the Mr. Beast channel was in I Opened a Restaurant That Pays You To Eat At It, where Jimmy jokingly fired him. Get out of here! He suggested we charge money for the food. What? Get out of here! Go! I don't ever want to hear you guys talk about charging again. While well, this was obviously just a meme for the video, it actually would become Tyler's final official appearance on the Mr. Beast channel. Honest question, after you suggested making people pay for the food in the restaurant video and Jimmy kicked you out, you were never in another video again. Did he fire you from being in more videos? Tyler did make a small cameo in Last to Leave the Circle wins $500,000, as well as the Squid Game video where he apparently featured as one of the guards. And when you combine this information with his Instagram, on which he's often still seen with the crew, it's clear that Tyler hasn't been fired, but is rather working from behind the scenes. Garrett eventually met a similar fate. He was first introduced to the channel back in May 2018, after the team cut his car in half, and from that point onwards he was a semi-regular in the Mr. Beast videos. In mid-2020, Garrett abandoned the channel to help out Mr. Beast's brother. However, as Mr. Bro began to upload fewer and fewer videos, Garrett also began to disappear from the internet. According to a reply on his Instagram, Garrett helps with social media stuff now, although he hasn't uploaded a tick 
TikTok or Instagram photo with the Mr. Beast crew in over two years and claims to be studying at the University of Alabama, which is over two states away from the Mr. Beast headquarters in North Carolina. Perhaps Garrett is still working with the crew from a distance. However, it does seem as though their relationship simply ran its course and eventually fizzled out. But what about Jake Weddle? He was another one of these guys who once featured in almost every Mr. Beast episode before he'd slowly disappear from the channel. Well, only a month after being seen in the I filled my brother's house with slime and bought him a new one video, Jake Weddle would upload a piece of content to his personal channel titled Why I Left Mr. Beast, in which he'd explain that he'd resigned from the team so he could pursue stand-up comedy under his own name. I, I found myself kind of, I guess, losing passion for what I was doing. I'm doing stand-up basically full-time now. Weddle went on to explain that his relationship with Mr. Beast had ended peacefully. Me and Jimmy actually left on very good terms. I met with Jimmy before I left. He understood where I was coming from. I understood where he was coming from. Which is supported by the fact that Weddle came back about a year later for two cameo appearances on the channel. However, there's a different Mr. Beast member who only managed to feature in one video before getting fired. Sneeko. Now, to avoid any unnecessary damage to Mr. Beast's image here, we need to specify that this was back in 2018, long before Sneeko had the reputation that he has now. Back then, Sneeko's content consisted of deeply meaningful, unbiased videos, which featured a unique editing style more advanced than almost anyone else on the platform. Anybody who was a fan of Sneeko at the time can vouch for how incredible his videos were, and with this in mind, it's really no wonder that Mr. Beast gave him a shot on the team. Sneeko made his first appearance in the I Built a Working Car Using Only Legos video. However, as explained by another video uploaded to Sneeko's personal channel titled, The Most Important Lesson I Learned Working for Mr. Beast, his employment didn't last for very long. I started working for Mr. Beast two years ago. It didn't last long because I got caught up with my ego, and this was during a time when I wasn't uploading on YouTube at all. Sneeko maintained a level of respect toward Mr. Beast even after leaving the team. However, the same can't be said for Marcus Pearson, who became the most controversial firing in Mr. Beast history. When Marcus was first introduced to the channel back in 2019, he quickly became a fan favorite. However, after being featured in the Mr. Beast Christmas special that very same year, Marcus stopped appearing in any of the videos. Five months later in May 2020, a fan would ask on Marcus's TikTok, when you coming back to Mr. Beast challenges, to which he'd respond to ask him, implying that maybe Marcus had been left in the dark about his future involvement on the channel. Approximately three months later in August 2020, Marcus was officially removed from the team, although unlike most of the other Mr. Beast members, Marcus didn't leave peacefully. So I gotta destroy him, bro. So I'm gonna destroy you, bro. I'm gonna destroy you eternally. For a long ass time, you gonna feel this. You gonna feel this tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. You ain't gonna forget about this. One. Marcus would take to Instagram and post a 12 minute story in which he'd make some absolutely delusional claims, such as Mr. Beast started the pandemic. He started this pandemic for a reason. Marcus was a leader whilst Mr. Beast was a follower. I was born a leader and he was born a follower. He was stealing sauce. I was borrowing sauce and paying homage, you feel me? Before going on a state that he thought Mr. Beast was a broken person for firing him. The only conclusion that I can make is that he's broken somewhere else. That's the only conclusion that I can come up with. While it seemed like Marcus's goal was to discredit Mr. Beast, the only person he seemed to discredit was himself, given Marcus's rant was so delusional and unfounded that it just made him look like an idiot. It's been stated all around the internet that Marcus was fired because of unacceptable behavior and a drug problem, although there's no evidence anywhere to support these claims. Mr. Beast stated in a podcast that their revenue dropped massively at the start of the pandemic, and the more likely reality was that Marcus was fired to save money on wages during a tough economic time. Marcus maintains an Instagram following of around 75,000, yet he's only made one post in the last two years, showing that his rant against Mr. Beast also marked the end of his online career.